Oh, yay, oh, yay, oh, yay. Hi, my name is Chris Seaman. I'm a visiting assistant professor at the Chicago Kent College of Law. I'm providing a preview of Estru versus Capato, a case to be argued in front of the Supreme Court on Tuesday, March 20th. The issue in this case is when, a, when is a posthumously born biological child, that is, a child who is conceived and born after the a wage earner's death through technologically assisted means, uh, is eligible for child survivor benefits under Title II of the Social Security Act. Uh, the facts in this case are that uh, Robert Nicholas Capato and the plaintiff, Karen Capato, were married in 19, 1999. Only a few months later, however, uh, Mr. Capato was diagnosed with esophageal cancer, which has a very poor prognosis. Uh, because Mr. Cap Capato's treatment included chemotherapy, which could leave him sterile, he deposited sperm at a clinic in Florida for the purpose of possible in vitro fertilization. In vitro fertilization is a process where egg cells are fertilized by sperm outside the body. IVF is a major treatment for infertility where other methods of assisted reproduction uh, have been unsuccessful. The first successful birth of a child using IVF occurred in 1978, and the number of children born worldwide th through IVF uh, is estimated at over 3 million people. The Capatos were able to give natural birth uh, in August 2001 to a child. The family then decided they wanted to have siblings for their son. However, Mr. Capato's det uh, condition rapidly deteriorated, and he passed away in March 2002 at the age of, four age of 44. Eighteen months after Mr. Capato's death, Mrs. Capato had a successful round of IVF, resulting in the birth of twins. Shortly thereafter, Mrs. Capato applied for Social Security survivor's benefits on, on the twins' behalf, based on Mr. Capato's earnings history. Mrs. Capato was unsuccessful at all steps in the administrative proceeding at the Social Security Administration. She then appealed to the district court, which affirmed the agency's denial of benefits. The district court held that the biological child of a deceased wage earner must establish that the child could inherit from the deceased under state law. It found in this particular case that Mr. Capato was domiciled in Florida when he died, and therefore Florida and Tessie law applied. However, because Florida law allows a posthumously born child to inherit only if expressly provided for in a will, the district court held the twins were not eligible for child survivor benefits. However, Mrs. Capato prevailed at the next level, the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Third Circuit. That court held that the undisputed biological children of a deceased wage earner and his widow are children under the Social Security Act, and therefore is unnecessary to determine whether the Capato twins would be able to inherit from Mr. Capato under Florida intestacy law. The Supreme Court granted certiorari in this case to resolve a split in the lower federal courts about the proper standard for determining who is considered a child of the deceased wage earner under the Social Security Act. In Section 416 of the Act, Congress provided that the term child means, quote, the child or legally adopted child of an individual. The issue is whether Congress intended the definition of child in this section to be exclusive or whether other statutory provisions must also be considered to determine who qualifies as a child. The Ninth Circuit held in Gillette Netting v. Barnhart that under 416E, a biological or otherwise undisputed child of the deceased wage earner was eligible re to receive benefits under the Act. In Capato, the Third Circuit followed the Ninth Circuit's decision in holding that because the Capato twins were the undisputed biological children of Mr. Capato, the deceased wage earner, this requirement was satisfied. Two other federal circuits have reached an opposite conclusion. The Fourth and Eighth Circuits have followed the Social Security Administration's own interpretation of the Act, which requires that a posthumously born child to satisfy one of the eligibility requirements in Section 416H, which is entitled Determination of Family Status. In particular, the Social Security Administration relies in this case in section, on Section 416H2A, which re requires the child claiming benefits to prove that he or she would be able, eligible to inherit via intestate succession from the deceased wage earner based on the, the law of the state where the wage earner was domiciled at the time of his or her death. In the briefs filed with the court, both Mrs. Capato and the Social Security Administration claim that the plain text of the Act, the legislative history, and Congress's intent support their interpretation. In addition, the administration argues that its own long-standing interpretation should be accorded so-called Chevron deference under the Supreme Court's 1984 decision in Chevron USA versus Natural Resources Defense Council, 
while Mrs. Capetto disputes this claim. Ultimately, while the number of children who are potentially eligible for survivor's benefits under this uh, provision is maybe relatively small, this is an important case for them as a decision in favor of the administration may make many posthumously born children, uh, if not most, ineligible for children's survivor benefits.